Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Plato's dialogue, the Mino, ends up coming more or less full circle by the end of the dialogue, because it starts out with this guy Mino, who's not an Athenian, he's visiting, and he says to Socrates, can virtue be taught? And Socrates says, hey, whoa, whoa, hold on there, buddy. I'm not even sure what virtue is. So you're asking me whether something has a particular property. I don't know what it is yet. And that's a problem. We need to inquire into that. We're going to talk about that in, in another uh, core concept video. I do want to signal that Socrates, towards the end, when, when they you know sort of give up the, the quest for figuring out well, what actually is virtue, he tells um, Mino, because Mino still wants to know, can virtue be taught? He says, we don't know what it is, but I'll, I'll go along with you. Let's, let's think about this in terms of something like a hypothesis. You know, and again, it's sort of like mathematics. Mathematics doesn't necessarily have to be the case uh, when they make a hypothesis, but if it were the case, then these things would follow from that and we at least know that amount. We know that much, right? We know what would be hypothetically the case. So Socrates says, well, hypothetically speaking, let's say that we actually do have some idea about what virtue is. And actually, he probably does have some idea because we see this coming up in other dialogues. And he does get uh, Mino to, to acknowledge virtue is going to be something advantageous, so he does know at least certain properties of it. Um, he suggests that it might be wisdom, or at least be guided by wisdom. There's, there's a lot of things going on here. Put all that aside. And Socrates says, we still don't know what virtue is, but let's say that it is a kind of knowledge, or a kind of wisdom. What can we say about knowledge? There's, there's some people who actually teach it. Now you might say, wait a second, didn't he just, in the Doctrine of Recollection, um, tell us that there aren't really any teachers, there's just reminders, and some reminders are better, and, you know, learning isn't really being taught, it's, it's remembering what we learned in a previous life. All that kind of goes by the wayside as, he, as he's talking about. He's going back to a more, more you know, typical conception of what counts as teaching and learning. Um, and he says to me, you know, there should be some teachers. If it's knowledge, somebody actually ought to be able to get other people to be better off with respect to virtue, right? They, they come in one side of the Virtue Academy, they go out the other side, and they actually understand virtue, or they have practiced it to some degree, or they're on the way, or at least they have the textbook, right? So Mino goes along with this, and then the question is, if, if it can be taught, if it is a kind of knowledge, then there should be teachers. Are there any teachers? Who are these people? And so they go through this, this discussion, and now a, uh, another person comes in, Anatus, who's, who's a young man of Athens. By the way, he's one of the people who's going to prosecute Socrates uh, in the uh, trial that leads to Socrates' death. And Socrates, you know, he wants to suggest a couple different people. Anatus comes up with a few people as well. But they start with the sophists. And the sophists were sort of like um, wandering intellectual guns for hire. And, and most of them were not from Athens. They came from other places, and they, you know, there was a whole variety of them. Many of them we don't know that much about except by, you know, attestations here and there. Quite a few of them actually wrote things that have been lost to antiquity. 
Um, some of them claim to only teach rhetoric or, or the art of, of speaking well. Others made claims to have knowledge about all different sorts of topics. The very word sophist comes from sophos, which means wise. So they were claiming to be able to impart wisdom to, to people. And Athenians would, would hire these guys uh, for a couple different reasons. One was Athens was a democracy. And in a democracy, to protect your own interests, you needed to be able to speak in the, in the public arena. You had to be able to make your own case. And so if somebody could teach you how to speak well, that put you at an advantage. And if other people could speak well and you couldn't, that put you at a disadvantage. The other thing was, a lot of Athenian you know, middle to, to upper class uh, citizens wanted a good education for their children. And there were al already traditional established ways of studying various arts, various um, techniques. You know, for example, they could be taught how to ride, how to throw the javelin, um, how to wrestle. You know, you send, you send your kid to the, the wrestling instructor. If you wanted them to learn an instrument, they could learn an instrument, although it was primarily a serval occupation. And the sophists were claiming to provide tutelage in all sorts of different subjects, not just about how to speak well, but how to think well. So they're a good candidate for who could be the teachers of virtue. Some of them did claim to, to be able to teach virtue. Uh, Mino says that Gorgias actually says he can't teach virtue, or he's not going to teach virtue, he's only going to teach people how to speak well, but other sophists claim to be able to teach it. And the discussion here is not... Um, not as, as deep as it could be, Anatus immediately says, those guys, no, there's no way I would let my kids anywhere near them, and we ought to actually drive them all out of the city. Uh, and Socrates says, wow, you've got some really strong opinions on that. You must know these guys really well. And Anatus says, I don't go anywhere near them. And so Socrates just sort of lets that slide. The idea is that Anatus doesn't actually know enough about these guys what it is that they promise, what it is that they can deliver on to be able to have any sort of reliable judgment about this. But Socrates, um, you know, asks uh, Mino, well, what about Gorgias? And Gorgias sort of takes himself out of contention by saying, hey, I don't, I don't even try to teach virtue. All I do is teach you how to speak well. And so that would disqualify them as well. And... The other question that you can ask that we'll get to is whether their, their teaching has any good effects. Anatus proposes ordinary citizens. You want somebody to be virtuous, just have them live with and, and you know, spend time with, as we would say in, in today's you know, business world, shadow, right? You, if you're an intern, you shadow the successful person and you get to see how they behave and how they, they approach problems and who they interact with who they avoid, and the kinds of interactions that they have, and what they plan, and what they, what they leave up to chance. And gradually you sort of, uh, you, you make their, their mode of living, or mode of choosing, their mode of thinking your own, you appropriate it, right? Anatus has the, the sense that that's how virtue gets taught. You just got to be brought up in the right kind of household. And... You know, there is something to this idea. Um, Aristotle will actually later on say, you can teach virtue. It's also really important to have the proper upbringing. That, that helps out a lot. Um, Socrates turns the discussion away from just plain old ordinary citizens and to what we might call exemplary citizens, statesmen, those who are involved in exercising power in Athens in major decision making, in public deliberation about not only what's just and unjust, like in a trial, but also about what's, what's useful or expedient or profitable and what is harmful or inexpedient, um, the sort of things that we call public policy, right? And he says, there have been some, some outstanding individuals. Now, the question that we want to ask is whether they were actually able to teach anybody else how to be like them. And so we ask, do any of these, the sophists, the ordinary citizens, the statesmen, do any of them reliably 
make their students or, you know, their children virtuous people. Um, he, Socrates actually, in, in this case of the statesman, brings up examples of people who did provide their children with a great education, but seem to have left out the most important part. How to be a decent human being, how to understand and aim for and achieve excellence. That's what virtue is about. So, when asked about this, Anatus and Mino can't produce any examples of anybody who's been benefited in any way by any of these people. So that means that none of them are actually able to teach virtue. They may, some of them, have virtue, but they're certainly not able to teach it. And that's a big problem. Because if they did really know it, according to Socrates, they ought to be able to impart that knowledge to another person. Maybe not everybody, but at least at one person, at least the people that they're closest to, at least the people that they have the greatest interest in becoming virtuous. In the case of the sophists, the people who are paying them money. In the case of the statesmen, their own children, who they would want to, you know, uh, live a good life and, and, you know, set good examples of their own. What it really comes down to is that none of these people can actually provide an account of what virtue is any more than Mino and Socrates are able to in, in this dialogue. And if you can't provide some sort of account, if you can't at least tell yourself, here's what I'm actually doing, if you can't, you know, bullet point it or... Uh, diagram it at least, or, or come up with some way of making sense of it that, that actually holds water, how are you going to teach it to another person? Just by saying, well, just do what I do? That doesn't work, because all these people can do that. It doesn't produce virtuous students, virtuous protégés, virtuous uh, fellow citizens. So the conclusion is, none of these people actually teach virtue because none of them actually know what it is. If any of them indeed have virtue or something like virtue, it's because they, they have been lucky. They've managed to arrive at uh, true belief or true opinion rather than actually having uh, firm knowledge about what it is that we're talking about here. So to answer the question in this dialogue, just this dialogue, because if we were going to ask it in, in the Republic, you know, uh, or perhaps even the symposium, we'd be talking about, you know, somewhat different matters. At least as far as this dialogue goes, the conclusion is, no, we can't teach virtue. 